da 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 Hello, everybody. Um, so this show is going to be a little strange. Um, I uh, got sick for like a week um, when we were going to do this show last week. Uh, and the problem was is that I had uh, a cold that got into my chest and I coughed so hard. I tore a muscle somewhere in my neck that starts from my ear and goes to my elbow. And I thought I got better. And then today, I it came back, like just slowly built into a crescendo of awful. And so I took some drugs that were for muscle relaxers for my back problem, hoping that it would just it would be so heavy duty it would take care of it. And instead it just got me really, really high and sleepy. So I fought through that. I'm in a lot of pain, but I'm excited to be here. Uh, with me is Royce Hobson, who you haven't seen since Frankenstein. Was the last time you on? Was it Frankenstein? That is real. I think so. I think she's really taking that. All right. All right, sorry. What? What was the last show that you were on? Was it what monster were we talking about? It was about? the one where your family is involved. Oh, it had to be Frankenstein. So you were yeah. would you, were you here for Did Creature? You I think you did Creature too. I think you were here for Wolfman. No, he wasn't here for Wolfman. Sure. Wolfman was Mariah Hyde. Creature. Was, it was I creature. think he was here for Creature. Yeah, yeah it's definitely Creature. Uh, and then obviously the delicious boobs back there is Alyssa, uh, who takes your questions and stuff like that and uh, reads them to me and I try to answer them. Um, brief thing, if you don't know what this is about, it's called House of Horrors, which is a movie that I'm uh, uh, in intending on making about a monster mashup. This Dracula, Wolfman, Frankenstein, all of them, including the Invisible Man. Uh, and so I do a heavy, heavy research on that. And um, if you look, go to House of Horrors on Facebook as a fan page, you will see a list. This is a printed of just what we're doing right now. Oh, it's backwards. Um... <clears throat> of uh, all the movies and stuff that I watch and all the games and things that I research. Today we're just talking about a few movies. Um, I think about four or five. Um, and we'll be taking some of your questions from the previous episode and, and moving on. Um, so, yeah. Would you like to say anything, Royce? Mm, no, I mean, uh, any knowledge that I have towards The Invisible Man uh, beyond the original Claude Rains film uh, I think only goes to Abbott and Costello, and <laughs> then, uh, well, of course, today. Yeah, we um, watched one today. Yeah, and uh, Hollow Man, maybe. I think that's, well, memoirs. But, mm. yeah. but no. Uh, <coughs> Late Lake of Extraordinary Gentlemen, yeah. you must have seen that. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, it's kind of invisible. Yeah, there's it's kind of an invisible douche in that one. Yeah. Yeah, just kind of just hanging around. Um, Alyssa, do you have any thoughts on The Invisible Man? The Invisible Man is pretty cool. And thinking about it today, I thought I have a question, which I will wait my turn. Oh, to okay. Ask. Yes. Okay. But All right. Well, I'm it's going to like bust up to the top of the line because I can't. Getting but, you know. comments on like, has any what would people do if they were invisible? That could be fun. I think actually that might be a question for you that I saw was asked. Oh, really? Uh, yes, but we'll get to that. Oh, yeah. Um. All right. So first, <laughs> uh, just a recap. The previous movies I watched before this show was The Invisible Man, Claude Rains, uh, which was, uh, uh, obviously, I, I, I thought it was a great film. It's it's one of the strongest universal films. Uh, the only weird thing is that you don't have to be invisible to make a train go off the tracks, and why he needed to do that was a little strange anyway, just running up the top of the mountain naked, making a train go off the tracks, and then going back and strangling people. Uh, that was a little strange. Um, Memoirs of the Invisible Man, also good, based on a different book. Um, it's also The Invisible Man. If you look up Invisible Man, it's about a black man in society in the 70s trying to... It's not. I did a little too much research, and so that doesn't help me. Um, and so it's The Invisible Man is the book that you're looking for. The Memoirs of the Invisible Man, um, which is kind of sad because it's directed by John Carpenter, but he didn't put his name on the title because he felt that it was... Uh, too mainstream or the studio had too much control over the film. So he never felt like it was his um, But it, you know Sam Neill was amazing in it. Chevy Chase's a straightforward character was awesome uh, And that's it. Those are the last those are the two we talked about before 
Uh, this time, we're, we've got uh, five films, uh, two of which kind of tied together, which was Mandroid, and then the sequel, Invisible, The Chronicles of Benjamin Knight. Uh, these are uh, full moon films, uh, which obviously has a big tie-in with my whole life. Um, <clears throat> uh, Mandroid kind of sets up. It doesn't, you don't really, he starts to turn invisible in Mandroid, but then in Chronicles of Benjamin Knight is really the, the movie, but it has like a warm up in Mandroid, the, the backstory. Um, great low budget films. I mean, you don't see a whole lot of Invisible Man stuff as of late. Of course, we got the news that Johnny Depp is going to be playing the Invisible Man. Actually, I get the news that anything that I like, uh, Johnny Depp is going to be playing it. Um, we we were looking at Kolchak, the Night Stalker. He's playing that. Um, he's uh, he's the Invisible Man. Um, I'm sure he's going to be Remo Williams. Uh, I'm sure uh, I'm a big fan of the Last Starfighter, so I'm guessing that Johnny Depp will just play the ship. Um, uh, I have also I loved uh, uh, when I was a kid. I remember liking the movie Benji, so I'm sure when they make Benji, Johnny Depp will be the dog. Um, but, uh, so he's pretty much in everything, uh, that I like, uh, and, uh, and so far I have not been super impressed with a performance though, though I saw a little bit of, uh, what he did to Dark Shadows, um, which was, um, well, I mean, there, 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 you could do worse things. I mean, there's racism and Nazism and, uh, feminism. Well, no, feminism, I guess, is supposed to be a good thing. So they got punched in the stomach once at midnight and the Jewish mother by, well, there was a, a a girl band that was playing and it, be, it, it was it was anti-men. They were very, uh, I don't know what the right word is, but feminism, istic, attitude, ment, shun, uh, I-O-N. Um, and I literally got punched in the stomach for just having a dick uh, as we tried to exit the the Jewish mother. You should have known better. I really, I think David, my friend, kind of picked up on it a lot faster than I did because there were families when we sat down to eat, and then the whole room just kind of filled with like women, uh, which you would think would be a great thing, until they all start looking at you like they're gonna put you in a wicker man. Um, so that's off topic. Um, Mandroid, Invisible Chronicles of Benjamin Knight, if you can come across those movies. I think they're both on uh, Full Moon Streaming, which is fullmoondirect.com. Uh, they might be on Hulu as well, uh, so far as seeing them now. I actually had them on DVD, so I was watching them from that. Uh, but that is a good way to track them down. Alyssa, let's do a question. Okay, this is an older one from Johnny Sullivan. Johnny! The voyeuristic adventures of the Invisible Man could be the first Darkstone extension spinoff after House of Horrors. Yeah, I mean, uh, as I've been watching the Universal films, they do more and more gags. Um, I was very taken by the special effects and memoirs, because they even today, they still really hold up. Um, I have to, Hollow Man went really CG with the whole thing, um, where I think there was a little bit of cartoon animation with memoirs, but uh, uh, it really, like, uh, where Frankenstein's monster and Dracula... And the mummy all kind of rely on our on practical effects and Mariah's side. The Invisible Man is really about camera gags. It's not so much makeup effects as it is uh, tricks of the camera, uh, which is uh, intimidating and exciting at the same time. So there is a possibility that I will be doing more of that, other than the the minor role in Skeleton Key, uh, in all of them, uh, which actually starts as a minor role and then becomes. Uh, one of the heroes because everybody seemed to like Jimmy's uh, take on it, um, and uh, and the song. They just like the yeah, they they liked him a lot. So it uh, uh, he became a, a much larger role. Uh, but yes, we're doing that question. Okay, Rick Germain. This is this is an older one too. Hey, congrats on all the recent P nine success. Oh, Plan nine. P nine's like my thing. <laughs> we don't want to talk about that. Um, but yeah, so um, for those who don't know, uh, the film I did, Plan 9, uh, the remake of Plan 9 from Outer Space, is available on Vudu, Amazon, uh, YouTube. All is rental, not not free. And then uh, any cable company in the U.S. basically has it in some fashion on their video on demand. Uh, so that's been really, really exciting. And hopefully that will lead us into the budget 
to do House of Horrors. Uh, those are it's because House of Horrors will be done on the budget level of Plan Nine or or slightly larger. Um, next question. Okay, um, Stephen Carr put the link that Johnny Depp will be the Invisible Man. That was right when we closed. Right the when show. we found out so last time. Went over that. Um, Jason <clears throat> Bennett said Invisible Woman was very much a romantic comedy. It was. Uh, we'll be talking about that in just a little bit, so I want to get ahead of myself. But uh, Invisible Woman was a very strange sequel. I like. Uh, but it, but it was very good on its own. But it was very weird how they how they did it. But no, it was it was very cool. Um, so next movie on the list is The Invisible Man Returns, which I had never seen, which is the direct sequel to the Claude Rains uh, Invisible Man. Uh, the coolest part, of course, about this is that it is a super young Vincent Price playing the Invisible Man. Um, this one was a direct sequel, as in the storyline continues, where he's a man that's being uh, put on trial for a murder he did not commit, uh, but he was friends with the brother? Uh, some affiliation with uh, Claude Rains' character from the original, who came up with the 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 using the drug to become invisible. However, it does make you batshit insane. <clears throat> um, and of course, Vincent Price kind of falls to the same uh, trials and tribulations that Claude Rains did in the previous film. Uh, but they had a noble reason for doing it. So I like that. We're like, obviously, you know, it's going to do damage and he's going to do harm to other people. But he had a really good reason for doing it, which was a good way of doing it versus just like a mad scientist just wanting to to go about that and is uh, like just being evil. Uh, had you seen Invisible Man Returns? No. No, I never saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they did a few more gags. They did some of the original gags they had done in the first film, but they kind of evolved it a little bit. Not quite. The Invisible Woman had a ton. Um, and I think the majority of the way they did most of the effects was just wearing a black bodysuit and they would just remove black and so this way you only see the clothes uh, moving around. Um, I think that's their primary gag other than strings and uh, which you can't it's actually like because of HD I think it would be extremely difficult because before you could do a lot of stuff with uh, fishing wire but I think now you'll just see it. Well I like how a lot of stuff actually looks now like uh, Invisible Woman today for example mm -hmm. in HD and you know you could Sure, you could point out any, you know, flaws or anything that uh, not visible uh, on your standard televisions. But I really like how you can now see, especially when they go in with the wipes and they and they actually essentially erase the actor, mm -hmm. but you can still see that faint. Yeah, the, white the line, line of it. Yeah, yeah. I actually like that. I think that instead of just being pure invisible, like to see a, a subtlety of a human form. I think that actually adds to it. You know, I, I, I just think it's a good look. Yeah, the, just to mimic it. I mean, that's probably the way we're going to go with House of Horrors versus Memoirs of the Invisible Man, where you actually saw him completely, but no one else could see him. Like, just the actors are pretending he's invisible. Yeah. Uh, but you wanted to see the hero the whole time, and so they. You could see when it, when it rained on him, though. Oh, yeah, it yeah. It was kind of like what you were saying. It was kind of like a gelatinous. Well, it's, it's pretty groundbreaking <laughs> as far as CG effects goes with memoirs. I mean, they, because I remember they did a the, the, uh, lot, uh, not just the HBO specials, but uh, like, it was actually a big deal, like mm -hmm. with the blue contact lenses that they would put in. And this, it was, it was weird, I don't think they were going green screen. I think it was just a lot of blue work. Yeah, this was back before. Um, I think before it became green screen, where it was uh, blue screen was what it was referred to in the like 70s, 80s, and yeah. so on. Uh, next question. All right. Derek Kearney. Derek. <laughs> <laughs> Would Frodo be considered part of the Invisible Man canon mm. when he puts on the ring? Well, yeah, but the, uh, mm. oh no, the, which one was the one where they would have the blanket? Uh, that's Harry Potter. Harry yeah, Potter. the cloak of, of invisibility. Um. I well, I mean, yeah, it was weird because it seemed like the ring kind. Of, and I don't know the books that well, um, but I want to say when he put the ring on, it kind of put him in like an alternate dimension, like he was in between spaces, because he could see the people, but he could also see other things in and around all of them. So it's almost like it's a ghost, actually. But when Bilbo would do it, he could still move stuff. 
But yeah, it was kind of like a ghost versus just straight invisible because he was kind of on a different plane where things could see him that couldn't see him before. And um, so it, it's weird. It's kind of like the going on like the vibration realm where like um, everything in and around us is 90% space. Um, and we're all on the same vibration plane with it. But if you start vibrating on a different plane, you would actually go through like your hand would go through walls and stuff to that effect, just because uh, you would be inside of that 90% space. Um, I think it's just something for the ghost hunters to take care of. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So next movie, <clears throat> Cloak and Dagger. I made a mistake. <laughs> I thought Cloak and Dagger was about an invisible man from just memory of, of, of childhood. Uh, Cloak and Dagger is actually about an imaginary person that has no realm or can't touch anything. And it's a very sad movie. Because uh, once again, it's the kid from E.T., Henry Thomas, just, just crying. I think I've seen too much of that as a kid. It was a Lifetime movie, wasn't it? No, no, no. It was, it was a big budget movie. Um, Dabney Coleman plays the, yeah. the spy, but uh, he was imaginary, not invisible. So that was uh, a mistake, and I apologize to all of you, but you specifically, because I know it, I know it hurt. Um, and, uh, but yeah, so that was Cloak and Dagger. Next question. Okay, these are some little comments and stuff from the Wolfman show. Okay. Because you said you wanted to go back and, and hit these. And it's really mostly um, people who missed the show. Sadly, Stephen Hoare. Oh, yeah. And Clayton Levi Ferry, who had to work as well. Sorry to hear that. Um, Jerry Moore, who we haven't heard from in a long time. He would love to be on the show sometime. Jerry, we'll work that out. Um, I definitely think it'd be fun to have you down. Um, and, and, and take, uh, Royce's seat because yeah. you are a prettier man. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, but yeah, no, that'd be great. That'd be awesome to have you on the show. I mean, you've talked about these monsters so much on your show. It only seems fitting that you could come talk about it on ours as well, which is cool. All right. Now we're going up to the current. Burp, burp, burp. Hold on. Almost there. All right. Terry Martin Falls. Oh. Busty Blindness. <laughs> yes, she is. Was the nickname we gave her when she was on Plan 9. She was, it was day one, first day of the zombie, but we had used the white context. So she couldn't see anything. And she's a very attractive woman with... um um Personality. <laughs> She's busty, so we just called her Busty Blindness because she was walking around looking attractive and couldn't see shit. So it was kind of funny. Okay, uh, but here's yes. her question. This is the only question I have, and it goes out to whomever. Do you or do you not have a booger wall? As in a wall where you put your boogers? Hmm. I'm not sure. I just assume that. I, I can start. Yeah, okay. You have okay, a you have, so, where do you put your boogers? Well they're not they're not my boogers, but I have walls that have a lot of boogers on them because your I have a lot of cats and when a cat gets enough respiratory, you know, and, and through the years, you know, there's big boogers on the walls. And they're really hard to get off and you have to this really big scrubby sure. them off. So Maybe so they're, they're cats. Of, they're, it's they're cat, cats yeah, cat boogers. Because you said they weren't yours. I'm just wondering well, why you're no. collecting people's boogers. No, no, no. Just just cat boogers. That's all I collect. Well, that's just weird. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> we all got our thing. So I collect <laughs> your boogers. <laughs> but I, I I'm practical. But I'm practical with them. I put them to use. They don't just go on a fucking wall. Ooh, what do you do? Oh, well, no. We're going down that road. Do we really want to do it, Johnny? You so I, 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 while driving, will pick my nose because it alarms everyone around me, and I flick them out the window. So that is where my boogers go. So Virginia you. is my booger wall. But do you get the backlash ever? Like, like you know when you go to flick and it does that string strand and then it flies back? Oh, I don't think I've ever had, like, quite that. Uh, you got kind of some eye shield. My nose gets, I have a big-ass nose, so everything's dry in there, so it's really crispy critters. All right. Uh, I just wonder if it's like the cigarette effect where you just look it out the window and sometimes it comes back in. And it's the person in the back. I have never encountered that. Okay, nobody's <laughs> been about it. No, no not that I've. Okay. I'm guessing it's happened to you. No. Nope. <laughs> I didn't think about it. I really thought about it, though. 
Mm-hmm. Note to self, mm-hmm. don't ride in the back seat of Royce's car with oh, the window God. open. So that's our booger wall. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, I used to have an old an older car. Uh, like a, uh, this a actually really hurts. Kind of. No. Yes, you do. I just raised my arm. Booger wall. I thought you were giving a thumbs up on the booger conversation. I was, <laughs> like, but then I realized how painful that was. So I, uh, that I'm. Well, no, I mean, but that, my, I think my '92 Daytona was my booger wall. Oh. Did you, know, you pick know. and put it somewhere? Well, sometimes you know you just. I definitely did when I was younger. It, you know, so you know the shift knob. Or the, <laughs> I, I definitely my first car when I was in high school. I, I know I put boogers somewhere. Yeah, I think yeah, it was like up under the dash, yeah, yeah. or maybe under the seat. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, uh, they're definitely. I think my first car, I was, I was pretty bad. Um, but the car was awful, and it needed to die. We actually pushed it into. We, we pushed yeah. it into a lake. I think at the your end. first car, it's got to be. Yeah, Chris yeah. in more ways than one. Next question. Yeah. Okay. Kenneth Tabor. Kenneth. Kenneth. Yay! This question is for Royce. What's the first thing you would do if you became invisible? Okay. Oh. Okay. I've actually thought about this before. Uh, this this coincides with zero gravity, uh, an, an idea I had with zero gravity as well. But uh, honestly, uh, because if we're going classic invisible man status, uh, you would have to be naked. Yep. You know, so you're running around naked. You don't want to be in the cold. You don't want to be running around the city trying to be a hero. Mm. It's just you're exposed and there's no armament, anything can kill you. I think I would just go the porn route. I, I think that would be, I mean, can you imagine? Like just one invisible man, like, and you're just seeing like all the stuff happen, and it's. <laughs> I actually. It's really freaky. I don't put them on my list, but every horror icon monster that we've talked about so far, mm-hmm. there is a, a feature length porno, on each one, and there is an invisible man porno. But I mean to really do it. I mean, uh, to, I mean, do, do I, I don't know. I've never seen this porno, but do they go into like CG effects at all? Where oh no, I think this was older. Any, because uh, I'm talking like close-ups. No, you know, yeah, and that's. I mean, I think that would be neat. A lot, a lot of it was like he was kind of sneaking. Like there would be somebody having sex, but the butt would be open, so he would just kind of <laughs> sneak up <laughs> and join in without the other guy knowing that it was happening. Yeah. I think that was kind of the gimmick of the movie. But exactly. a real, but a real life application though, if I were invisible, I think I would just that would be the market I would try to corner. Hmm. Is porn because I don't. I don't really now mind you if, if you even asked him would he become a gummy bear he would, yeah. po- he would he would the cornering the market on porn is the first thing that he would do with any special power I was just thinking this is well I mean the one thing that will always sell is sex uh, you know I mean well I mean seriously I mean I, a lot of people would probably be like I'd rob a bank mm-hmm. or anything I you just they're go they're go watch piles of money just be flo- you know floating away I mean it's, it's kind of like once again, you're naked. It's just if you're gonna be naked, you might as well be. Um, you could have an awesome booger wall that no one would ever know. <laughs> yeah, no one could. See no it. one would ever know that you have a booger wall. Or is it like that kind of invisible man thing that anything that comes out you see? It's that just was, your skin. That was my question that I was gonna ask tonight. Oh well, let's get into oh, it now. Well, yeah, well, yeah, no, do, it now. do it now. Well, now it's, it's a follow-up kind of, question. You kind of blew it. Was that your oh. question? Like, if you pee, <laughs> wait till the movie, the porno movie. That's... Okay, so that was my question: was things that come out of you, like if you sneeze, boogers, or if you pee, or any mm. other things that might come out of you, what and you're invisible. Mm. Once it leaves your body, is that invisible? Memoirs kind of went over this: is that when you when you put food into your body, when it digests, it becomes so much a part of you that it is invisible. So everything, poop, everything stays invisible. Well, once it exits, they, didn't, they only went to like what goes in his body once it digests. But it they becomes didn't, invisible. They didn't do what comes out. So like, uh, I could go up to you. You're sitting on the couch, and I'm invisible, and I could poop next to you, right. and you'd be like, "Oh my god, See, what I, is that?" And then you'd be like, "Lean over, put your hand in my poop." And scientifically, I think that has to go down to poop? a cellular level, though. I mean, that has to be completely cellular to the point where, okay, we're not bending light. This is not a refraction of any kind. This is this is. Uh, your chemical makeup. I think that just leaves too many questions that, that need to be answered. I like the idea of that your skin is just refracting light and bending light around you uh, as a form of invisibility. In the movie, it was the drug made uh, his skin translucent. Mm. It was like it was such a, they said it was like such a white that you just can't see it anymore with the human eye. 
Mm. Um, that was the idea. I, I know when I read the original book, I'll probably know a lot more. But I, I, they, I think we read or somebody commented that the uh, the book was very close to the Claude Rains movie, and in that he it was a drug that just turned your uh, cells like translucent essentially. So it wasn't bending light. It was just you just can't see it. Right. Um, the spectrum of light. Kind of, yeah. That's why you yeah. can see through it versus <coughs> like bouncing off. Because um, like the predator was the bouncing right. light. That yeah. was the bouncing light. But you could kind of make him out because yeah. everything was a little off, especially when he moved. Yeah. But in Invisible Man, it doesn't quite do that. Like you can, you wouldn't be able to. Well, at least in the movies, you can't tell he's even in the room with you. Did they explain that in Predator? How did I miss that? That we knew that. When he went invisible, it was because of the... I think they theorized in a bunch of them. Because I've seen yeah, it would be like a stealth, bazillion yeah, times. Yeah. Like I, I think they talk about it in part two, maybe? Because they're familiar with the Predator when they get to part two. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, Gary Busey's studying him. Yeah, Gary, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> uh, well, hey, Gary Busey, as you know, scientist. Gary yeah. Busey is like... <laughs> yeah, put him on Celebrity Ghost. They have Predator versus Chad. As a ghost. <laughs> He'll do it. He'll find him. He will, because he's a genius. <laughs> um, all right, next question. Oh, I forgot. Forgot we're doing questions. <laughs> we got a little distracted. A little distracted. Um, Kenneth Tabor. Kenneth. Um, Holly Man, which I think he means Hollow Man, Okay. my guess. No, I Holly got it right the first time. Okay, we'll go with Holly Man. Bring, bring up the fact, because he was invisible, his eyes were exposed to the light. Think that helped with bringing on the madness. Yeah, they in memoirs they go over this a little bit too, where he can't sleep because he's seeing through his eyelids. Now, granted, obviously wearing like a putting a blanket or wearing one of those sleep things would take care of that. But yeah, obviously, uh, if you are on the run, it would uh, definitely affect the the madness. However, in memoirs, I don't think he was going. I don't think he insane. It wasn't affecting him the same way. But the uh, the drug in the Invisible Man series uh, is what drives him insane. So I'm, I'm sure it would be an annoyance, but it's something you could work around, I would imagine. Yeah, it's kind of like a Phantom Limb scenario. You know, yeah. Kind of, but you know what else was, uh, aside from Kevin Bacon in that movie, you know what else was invisible? What? His Academy Award. Oh, burn! It went to Slater for the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which I haven't seen yet. I've seen the first Hollow Man a, a while ago. I, seen the second one. I have not seen the second one. It's on my list of my additionals. Uh, so last movie we're going to talk about we watched today called The Invisible Woman, uh, which was not a very good sequel, but it was a great movie on its own because um, it had nothing to do with the previous two. The way they turned invisible is like they took an injection. Plus a machine. Plus a machine. That kind of, and it only turned you invisible for a short amount of time. You could turn back. Um, but it gave you a super uh, power ability if you drink alcohol. Yeah, apparently you. if it's in your system after you do it. So if you drink alcohol at any time, you will just become invisible. Yeah. Um, I must interrupt. Mm -hmm. Kenneth Tabor says he cannot see the show. Is there something, what's, is there something going on here? Oh, no, he's no, throwing no. out questions, he said, but he's. Can he hear it? Um, it looks like it's working. I can't tell. I mean, everything looks says live. Yeah, everything says Green it's okay. Because he, we got three viewers. He said he didn't think it started, so I think That's he's us. not getting anything. <laughs> oh, maybe. Um. Well, Kenneth, if you're if you're hearing this part, um, he's, let, he's not hearing it. He's is anyone is is anybody um, else saying? If you're watching the show right now, please let us know if it's working or not. We're going to keep going as if it is. Um, he cannot hear it either. How did, oh, did you ask he's, him? He's sending me questions. He's sending me IM saying, he's, he's sending the questions on the site, but then he's like, hey, I can't hear the show. We don't can't have see the show. anybody else. Um, people are sending in questions. Okay. So they're they're not saying maybe it's just can. Kenneth is just having technical difficulties. Maybe. 2016. Maybe. Well, if you if you can see or hear the show, please comment real quick just so we know that the show is being broadcast. I mean, everything looks like it's working. Maybe we're all invisible people. Is what uh, we just tell them it's the invisible show. <laughs> well, hopefully he'll be able to tell them we're answering his questions, and hopefully it'll you'll be able to watch it after we're done. Well, we've been okay. drinking alcohol. So far, no one has commented about seeing or hearing. 
Okay, so the Invisible Woman, hopefully this is happening. Um, the, in, uh, the, the, the coolest part about the movie was uh, the cameos, which you had one of the guys from Three Stooges, the guy who replaced Curly, uh, Shemp, and then uh, the Wicked Witch was the maid. Was yeah. she the maid? Uh, Mrs. Jackson, I think, was her character name, but I don't know what her servant. Yeah. Uh, but those were cool seeing like those two those actors uh, and it is a lot of gags There's one incredible stunt of the butler going up a staircase and just flipping off oh, Not face first, but pretty damn close. He went he, uh, he went top of his he head got, he got, Yeah, you kind of rolled his shoulder boom. Um, That was pretty good. Uh, it's a great movie for itself, but it is it is a comedy But doesn't have anything to do with the series whatsoever. It's just something you just like stand alone um, but it was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it's something you definitely would watch with a girlfriend or something like that. You know? Yeah, I think the comment that was made earlier about yeah. a romantic comedy it was yeah. it was to some regard where they kind of fell for each other even though he couldn't see her, and then when he finally saw her, he didn't want to throw her out. Um, so that was all that was all good in the neighborhood. Uh, it was um, made in Australia, however. Oh yeah, <laughs> anything. We watched a lot of Australian films, and they do not. The formula does not matter. They do not follow it, which is great because they do so much different and unique stuff. Mm -hmm. But the formula does not matter. He's waving, waving to Kenneth. He's on. He's on. Oh, you can it. see us now? Yeah. Oh, okay, hey, good. Kenneth. Hello, Kenneth. Hey, hey, Kenneth. Welcome. <laughs> good, good, good. I'm Goodbye. glad. I'm glad it was your technical <laughs> and not our technical. Usually us. I know. <laughs> um, all right. So next question. Next question is, speaking of Australian, it's from Stephen Marr. Stephen. Where does the Invisible Man rank in your old time, old time favorite classic horror characters? Well, out of the Universal monsters, he's actually very low to me, Aww. just because I like the other ones so much. Definitely over the Mummy. I've never really been attracted to the Mummy storyline, um, but I haven't done a really in depth study either. So that when I finally get to that, because um, Frankenstein's monster used to be very low on the totem pole for me as well, until I did the research, and then he kind of went up the pole. Uh, the Invisible Man, the movie is really well done. Um, uh, so far as favorite character, it's it's kind of tough because the monsters are so intriguing. Um, and he's definitely one of the humanoid ones. Um, that's just kind of a madman with a special ability. Um, but uh, I definitely think that the production value of the first two films and Invisible Woman is very cool it's very well done and it is i would say even better than like the wolfman lon cheney the production value wasn't quite as strong as the invisible man the invisible man was just a better movie but the wolfman is a much more intriguing monster um so it's kind of hard to judge uh but i'm trying to uh, to fall in love with each monster individually so that when i do the movie that all of them will get kind of the their due um without loving one more than another um but it is kind of hard to do because there's so many, and you kind of attracted to different things. Um, but we'll see. But right now, not the giant on the list, but definitely uh, I'm learning a lot about the Invisible Man, which is getting him to, to get a little higher up on the list. <laughs> right now, I would definitely say the bottom of the list is the mummy, um, but that might change once I get into the actual studies. Okay, Stephen Harris replied to that comment of Australian talking about that. He said, Aussie, 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 oi, oi, oi. <laughs> no, it's very true. <laughs> I think that's how you do it, right? Yeah, We. what was the movie we watched last night? Uh, the Killage. The Killage. Uh, it was an Australian low budget, very really wow. low budget film, but they do not follow the formula. Like, you know, lead characters will die halfway through the movie. Like, there's nobody that you can. American films are very formulaic uh, most of the time, where you like see somebody and you're like, okay, that character is going to make it to the end of the movie because we've, we've learned so much about them. Where uh, Australia, for most of the films I, I've seen, they don't, they just turn the whole thing on their head and they're just like, well, we got to know this character and you think it's going somewhere, uh, but now he's, they're dead. So, and, and then the other characters that you don't think yeah, are going to be big. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, they, they, they almost screwed me last night. <laughs> um, which are great betting movies because you just never know what's going to happen, which is cool. Um, next question. Can a Tabor with modern tech like heat sensors, do you think it takes some of the scariness out of the character? Hmm. 
Well, yeah, it's true. The because in memoirs they were using heat uh, um, sensors to do it. Now the Invisible Man is not quite as dangerous as he was back when these movies and the book was written because back then of course they didn't have that kind of technology so it was a much more like scary kind of a thing um but with definitely modern technology and satellites you know they could tell you how many people are in the house so if the military was hunting the invisible man he doesn't probably have much of a chance but if you're in a house alone and uh you don't have access to that stuff that's where the the fear would come in i think not knowing that he is who he is would be more dangerous than, uh, but if like yeah, there actually was a manhunt, they probably wouldn't make it. That's what I'm saying. Keep your goals low. Keep your <laughs> You're not going to take over the world as the Invisible Man. Yeah. I mean, the second we knew there was Invisible Man and banks were being robbed, they would find him pretty right. quickly. Um, they would just have heat sensors in every bank. And just follow the floating money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, next question. Um, this is from Stephen Hart. It's a two-parter. Mm -hmm. What if Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, also created created the invisibility serum and the invisible man was his guinea pig? And then part B is, and if this is a path you take, any chance for a showdown? Well, um, I've got my ideas for the storyline uh, because obviously the invisible man character and Dr. Jekyll are not immortal. So the, their science is being used again because this is a modern science. telling where it's not quite them. So things are going to be done and kind of mixed together a little bit. I guess that's the only hint I'll give. Uh, that there will be some mixing and matching with the science uh, just because I don't think it's been done in too many mediums as of yet. In my studies, I haven't come across it. Uh, but there will be a new person who's turned invisible and there will be a new person who's given the hide serum um and possibly chemical x which i think made the powerpuff girls uh <laughs> we might throw that in there just to, just to see what happened um but yeah so it's i, I don't want to give too much away but i am going to be like approaching that those very subjects and yes so far as that is concerned i promise every 10 minutes there will be a versus of someone, one monster versus another monster. We'll constantly have, it's not going to all be at the end of the movie. It's going to be a constant thread throughout the, the film. A lot of people get hurt. A lot of people getting hurt. Mainly him. Yeah. <laughs> and Talon. Uh, and ta well, no, Talon, does, it, does Talon get hurt? Uh, Talon can hurt people. He's an ox. Yeah. You can go through a wall or two. Mm. I get hurt. <laughs> we will bleed. Yes, it will happen. <laughs> Which then you know I can die. Next question. On that note, mm. um, Stephen Har. <laughs> <laughs> if Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, injected himself with invisible serum, but was bitten by a werewolf before <laughs> going invisible, how much messed up would that be? Well, no, I, I definitely think there's an interesting thing <coughs> to the the if a werewolf is injected with the hide serum now this is something that i'm probably not doing in in the movie so i could talk about it um because it depends on what kind of werewolf you're dealing with if they have uh healing capabilities anything that that offsets the human body or the wolf body the hybrid will probably just get burned out of the system but you might have like a solid hour where the wolf man and hide could be very similar now, if Hyde gets bitten by a werewolf, that's a whole other subject because that's a man with the injection. But I think the Wolfman healing capabilities would, would burn it out of his system, I would imagine. But you could drug anything. So there's short bursts of raping wolves. I think you would get two versions of Wolfman. Uh-huh. I think it is just depending on when uh, Jekyll would uh, take his serum. Yeah, uh, that that coincides with whatever lunar cycle is going on, depending on your mythology. If if he was bitten by a werewolf as a man and was starting to turn, then inject himself, I think the wolf man or the wolf uh, side would take over the hide, and you would end up with a super monster. Either that, or or one of them would overpower the other. Whatever is more, you would. Either, 
because Hyde is all about having conscious thought because mm -hmm. it's all about lust and wanting things and and kind of childlike. Where the Wolfman is completely bloodlust. It's not even about being a wolf. It's about like just killing. Yeah. For the most part. Now the one thing is that I would say the Wolfman would overpower the Hyde. Because a wolf man is directly connected to devil worship and Satan, mm. which I'm guessing that kind of supernatural would probably overpower science. Um, just with the pentagrams and stuff like that. I mean, oh. it really does depend on your lore. Yeah, we need we need a good strong debate on this one. Mm. We need we need no we need like people actually like creating. Uh, it's kind of it's kind of like science versus religion. It would be you it know? would be because that, the wolf be man really movies are very much. Uh, dipped in in uh, a biblical sense yeah uh so it's all about which one would be more powerful the science or that now if you go into the like the immortal wolf man i would still kind of think that anything put into their bodies would would burn out the 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 um, immune now they would probably have it for a short amount of time um because the wolf man has been tranked before and so but it is now he's not tranked for long right um so it would be something similar to that Maybe if it was in the bloodstream as a man, and it lingered behind when he got uh, transformed. That's true. There's a man. There might be something that would happen. Either way, it would be um, terrible. And oh yeah, you don't want to be in that room. Be invisible. <laughs> you and and if he's invisible, it's just. It would just be. The wolf out would be less scary. He probably would be less afraid yeah. of a werewolf or a wolf man that's invisible. Just because I think yeah. half of like seeing the wolf yeah. man is what's scary, but if it's just a growling thing like following you around, it's bad. But I'm not sure it would quite give the same fear as seeing the wolf man in front of you. Yeah, especially if you go old school wolf man where he's just trashing a room. Right. Well, yeah, yeah. And he's just got a lot of growls and furniture being flung. Yeah. It's like fuck poltergeist. That's... Next question. Mm. Okay. Um, next question question is from Kenneth Tabor. In the human vapor, the man had gone power hungry, and man, did he show it. What did you think? I haven't gotten to that one yet. That is before my next show. Um, human vapor is the ninth film, which uh, will be. I'm gonna. I have to, the last. I don't can't remember if we've already scheduled the last show, uh, or I think I'll be scheduling it a couple weeks from now, and so I'll be watching it. But thank you so much for sending the movie in and. Uh, uh, I'll definitely be watching it and then giving it back to you when you play an extra in uh, Lovecraft, uh, which we are also rescheduling. So there's lots of rescheduling going on. But I haven't seen it yet, but I will be watching it uh, as the ninth film. The next film I'm to watch is Hollow Man. That's kind of a recap. I've seen it before, but it's been a while. And uh, I believe there's some bacon penis in it. Yep. Yeah, I'm excited. It was, it was, almost, it was almost the invisible porn. He did. He, he didn't, didn't rape. Yeah, he did yeah, rape. Yeah, he was yeah, rapey. Not cool. He was a bit rapey. Yeah. Next question. Um, that would be from Stephen Har, and it, and I've had the same question. If the Invisible Man ever had a child, would they be invisible or have the invisible curse in their genes by default? Well, they answer that in Invisible Woman. Yep. Genetic. Oh. For that storyline, that she has a kid, and the kid is not invisible, but when the alcohol is mixed into the blood system, they rub al al rubbing alcohol on him. And he turns invisible. So in that storyline, and then Memoirs of the Invisible Man, he had a kid that was not invisible. So wait, no, he, it just showed him be, her being pregnant. Oh right, yeah. yeah we didn't so we see didn't know. That, yeah, we so yeah, they they didn't answer it. Um, uh, but Invisible Woman, they did. But it's a very different science from the 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 lore that we would be dealing with. So I don't know. Um, we got to work on that, Stephen. You and me, we're gonna become mad scientists. <laughs> and uh, inject everybody with everything and just see what happens. It'll be fun. But the script cannot be written by Australians because I will probably die like two minutes into the movie. Um, unless everyone thinks I'm going to die and then I might live to the end. I don't know. Maybe we'll get like a, medi like a medium ground. We'll get the UK guys to write it because then it's not quite too formulaic and not too unformulaic. And uh, then maybe we have a chance of surviving this horror movie that we're going to be partners in. Let's get Africa to write it. I, I don't see too many African films. Exactly. Uh, the Gods Must Be Crazy? I think that was UK. Or no, was that the Australian? Uh, yeah. Because that wasn't African. That was uh, Aborigines, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, hell, 
got some. You know, got some I have not seen city. an African film. Exactly. I think. There's big cities in Africa. I'm sure there's writers. This seems like that's a mistake. I should rectify. Oh, well, I just learned something about myself. I am a racist. Racism. Yeah. It goes that's down with milk. That's just what Stephen Hart just said. Boo! I'm playing the racist car card. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. <clears throat> well, I mean, it's something to think about. You're all, yeah, you're all like on the same page. Yeah. Next question. Okay, next question is Kenneth Tabor. Hollow Man 2 was not very good. Do you think the story was bad or the acting? Haven't seen it. That one is, I'm watching it in my additional studies, and I'm imagining that uh, straight. To, usually the straight-to-video sequels are not as strong as the, uh, the, the originals. Usually there are some... Uh, uh, exception, uh, exceptions to the rule, but um, uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'll probably make him watch it with me, and we'll have some drinks when we watch it. Actually, I can't drink when I watch the, the uh, these. I uh, turn invisible. Well, yeah, no, I'll turn invisible. But no, I have to actually pay attention to the storylines and stuff like that. So I actually, I have not drank when I have watched any of these. Last Usually, yeah, but you're kind of having your Last own little robo party with all the cough medicine you're on. Yeah, I am on so many meds right now. Who knows what the hell I'm watching? Um, next question. Um, Stephen Har, if poop and urine is invisible, would you go around <coughs> pissing on toilet seats, etc.? No, people. Melissa gave me the idea for this question. <laughs> waiting for somebody to ask this. Well, go ahead. I don't know. I'm just waiting for somebody to ask. I don't have the answers, but I that is a that is the best question I've ever heard. <laughs> I definitely would throw poop a lot. Oh, like you a monkey? go primal? Yeah, I think so because that just would be more fun because it would be a bunch of an impact <coughs> or gravy nuggets. I just go around throwing <laughs> gravy nuggets at everybody. I think it'd be really fun because obviously the smell is not. Uh, <coughs> yeah, the smell anywhere. would would still so be there. Just to shit in your hand and you're like so you're naked, you're invisible, but to shit in your hand and just walk around just rubbing on people's food or or just on their lap. As they're sitting there at dinner, and their, their date or wife or mother or whoever is with them, you know, I mean, how do you explain this? Like, I swear, it's not me, but it's obviously radiating from them. Right. You know. And now, in the comic book of League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, Hyde actually catches the Invisible Man, rapes and kills him. And puts him on the table, and he's got and he's bled all over their food, and everybody's eating, and the Invisible Man's heart slows down, and he actually turns visible, which is like the Claude Rains film, as he dies. And when he turns, and because of that, even the blood that was on everybody's sandwiches and stuff becomes visible when he dies, even though it is separated from his body. So in League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, they do kind of cover that a little bit. Yeah, they've been, and Hyde is just enjoying himself while everybody's been eating the Invisible Man uh, without knowing it. And he, I think he, he was he was bent up because he had, he had been raped before slaughtered. Because uh, it's Hyde. And then that one, it was like Hulk Hyde, which is even worse. <laughs> uh, our next question. Stephen Hart, what did you guys do for Valentine's Day? Next question. I was sick. We were supposed to go see Deadpool, but I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't do anything, and and he was single for Valentine's Day this year. He do, <clears throat> and so was that one. So, not a whole lot, sadly, was done for Valentine's Day. Um, I was. Uh, I was definitely very, very ill. Um, so, I was just ruining Valentine's Day for Mariah. Is what I was doing. Twenty sixteen. Uh, 2016 has not been sh a good year so far for a lot of people, so I'm feeling that it is the trials and tribulations of 2016. If you can survive it, uh, it's kind of like tests and things to that matter, and uh, eventually we'll answer the riddle of the Sphinx. And then if once we do that, the 2017 hopefully will be better. But now we just have to survive 2016. It's been pretty rough for a lot of people, so I'm guessing that's that would be... How I relate it, it's just a, like a video game that you have to make it through. A very hard video game, like an, an original NES game. Yeah, with only three lives. Oh, yeah. Next question. Stephen Harr, could you sense an invisible man's body heat? And P.S., Gary Busey kicks ass. 
Uh, yes, you. I, I would think that you could. You could smell him as well. Um, if if there was anything on his body or, or something, because a lot of people's senses can be uh, very attuned to smell. Like if he smokes or he ate onions or had garlic or anything that would come from his body that you would notice, uh, you would probably, all your other senses would be able to sense that he's there, um, even if you can't see him. Well, what about the invisible man? What do you mean? Oh, I thought you were talking about Busey. Oh, <laughs> I have a Busey story. <clears throat> I was down in, I was at a convention called Spooky Empire in Orlando, Florida. And it essentially, it was a giant convention, uh, but it was kind of a party con. And at, at the end of the night, the there was about 400 people all out on this kind of patio walkway that had two bars. And uh, they had there were people walking around with snakes around them and live alligators. People were carrying around live live alligators. And then in the there were hot tubs everywhere. They were just in the ground. There was no like like you could just walk and fall into a hot tub. But there was there's walkways everywhere. And Jason Muse was in a hot tub with like five women. Natural. And through the crowd. I see this man with his wild hair in a bathrobe and slippers just storming across the to the bar. And we got close enough and I I saw it was Gary Busey and, and then I saw his son uh Jake Busey turn and exit when he saw his father. <laughs> so that was my. That was that was me seeing Gary Busey, uh, in in all of his glory, stomping through the yard to get a drink from the bar that was outside, in a bathrobe and slippers, which I don't think came with that hotel. So he must have brought them from home, uh, and he travels with them. So that was that was that was the thing. That was that was my Busey, and the embarrassment of his son seeing his father. In a bathrobe and slippers at the bar, was uh, was something. <laughs> he does not let down. He is he's got his kooky crazy with his, his Amazon Fire TV, and that's real Busey. Like he does not let you down. That is either whether it's all an act or it's truly how he is. He you, you will get the 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 actual article every time you meet the man. Uh, for many other friends, seeing him at other cons, they've got tons. Of, everybody's got a Busey story because it's Busey. He's still hunting the predator right now. <laughs> <clears throat> Next question. All right. This is a comment from Stephen Hart. He says, Royce and Alyssa should hook up. Oh, Woo! shit. PayPal. Now, which one? Oh, yeah. Let's just start a PayPal. <laughs> and uh, which one wears the strap on? You. We'll do that by the PayPal. If it's an if, if Boy, how much money goes into it, sword. if it's an even number, Alyssa gets to wear the strap on. If it's an odd number, Royce wears the strap on. So send your money in to <laughs> Meow Meow Studios at PayPal.com. That is not real. <laughs> okay, next question. Um, Kenneth. Oh, that, as Kenneth was saying that now he can't. He, it was be, this was old from when he couldn't see the show. And then Henry Ty gave him the link. Thank you, Henry. Thank you, Henry. And let's see, Stephen Hart commented on that as well. Okay, so our next question is Henry Ty. Um, can the Invisible Man be defeated by the Ghostbusters? Well, yes. If you shoot that proton pack thing at anything, I'm thinking that <laughs> that it's pretty much a done for deal. Nuclear accelerator. I mean, all they have to do is stand in a room and just shoot it around the room, and you're probably making somebody's day really, really bad. Um, I mean, they take out cockroaches that'll bite your head off. So, a miserable man might not have a shot so far as the proton pack is concerned. Next question. Stephen Har is there. If there is going to be a lot of verses throughout the movie, how many icons will be left by the time the film's climax? Can't answer that question. That, th not all of them. <laughs> I will say that, but some. That the, 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 maybe. <laughs> like, uh, there, there are definitely a lot of verses by the end of the film. There will not be as many as starting at the beginning of the film. 
That is as much as I can give, I think. Because also, some of it I don't know, because I haven't gotten into the script writing yet. Just but say yes. Yes. <laughs> Next question. Um, <laughs> Kenneth Tabor. Hyde, Wolfman, Invisible Man can't mix. The DNA of each would already be dominated by a super gene. It would either null it out or kill them. Yeah, that's kind of where I was. Well, I don't know about, I didn't think about killing them, but uh, I definitely would think that one would overpower the other one. Um, well, Steven thinks it's a great way to kill them. And then Kenneth, I would just re inject them with, oh, okay. Yeah, and then mm. Kenneth was like, I think it would be more like nil. They all heal quick. That's true. You do heal very quick. Well, yeah, yeah, I think if you hit the Invisible Man with anything, he's pretty much fucked because he's got, he's just, his cells are, uh, Invisible, but he doesn't have really any special abilities. So what we need is is Jekyll just running around with a needle <coughs> While Dracula and Wolfman are just everybody's biting and j injecting everybody to see what happens, right? That would it's be like a battle royal. Yeah cage match. I no, just put them all in a sack <laughs> You know, it's kind of like the snake the dog and, yeah, the, and, yeah. the, and the thief and Chuck Norris's head. Yeah So they, when they're like a thing where he like was put a, they put a rat in it and uh, if you guys know what movie I'm talking about, they hang Chuck Norris upside down. They put a, a starving rat in a bag and tie it around his head. And Chuck Norris oh, he kills the, he he kills the rat. The rat. I think it's one missing in action, maybe. Maybe it's one I of those. I think it was Delta Force. <clears throat> no, no, I don't think. I think it was one. Of, I don't think it was part one, but it might have been like part two. But yeah, so Chuck Norris's <laughs> head will defeat all monsters. I think if you just put him in a bag. Hmm. Next question. Okay, Kenneth Tabor, Royce. How would you play the Invisible Man? Like this. <laughs> oh, oh, God. <laughs> hey, hey. Oh, geez. <laughs> that was weird and nice. Ooh, somebody copped it. Yeah, you feel so much better than your dad. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that, that is, is how, how I would play it. <laughs> <laughs> Back to porn. That was a warm. Oh, Kenneth. Tabor says missing in action too. I was missing. Oh, right. yeah, I was missing in action uh, too. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I love that how we have the internet and computers <laughs> and we don't use it. Yeah. It's like no, no, I remember <clears throat> shit. <laughs> and then Stephen was saying positive thinking. I think with all the healing quick and all that. Yeah. About so. Well, are we wrapped up? We are not. We are not. So fast, little mister. Eat another right. cough drop. I will have another cough drop. <laughs> Uh, Kenneth Tabor, 2016 is just getting the bad out now. So it will smooth out. It, it, so everybody hang I on. I like that. I like that optimism. Yeah. Oh, let's do drugs I hope so. <laughs> and then another from Kenneth. What are the essentials you see for a proper invisible person besides the obvious? As in essentials, as in like to film it or like an actual, like your invisible man, what do you need? Well, the bandages, the hat, the goggles. Goggles, especially for sleeping, I'd imagine, would be quite important. Um, uh, I remember in uh, Memoirs of the Invisible Man, some of his clothes were invisible. So he would set them down and not be able to tell where his jacket was. Mm -hmm. That was kind of a cool concept. Yeah, because that was more chemical induced. Like, it was. It was like. It was like yeah. And then it went. Into his system. And it's yeah. funny that he couldn't see his own invisible stuff. Right? Yeah. So he couldn't. So I guess he couldn't see himself. I can't see his hands. Right. They yeah, they talk about that in Invisible Woman, stuff. where she can't see her feet trying to put her socks on. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it'd be, you'd basically be doing everything in the dark. I think actually training a lot of stuff in the dark would be wise, because uh, so far as seeing yourself, yeah, it'd be kind of like being blind, but not at the same time. Yeah. Being blind, but you can see. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's being fucking deep. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's that song "Blinded by the Light" is about. Because obviously he's seeing light, but there's that douche but that's it, wrapped up. I don't, it, I don't, yeah, I don't in the middle that, of the night. I don't get that douche thing. I don't understand. Now, before the comments start rolling in, I know it's deuce. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Um, back to work. Um, oh. Kenneth commented on that he meant character for the essentials. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess that was, I guess we started getting into that. Uh, yeah, it did. makeup was a cool idea of actually like putting makeup, except you would need to wear like contacts um, because your eyes would just be transparent, unless you wore makeup and glasses. 
I guess. I guess that would kind of work. Um, but yeah, you'd have to you'd have to plan for a lot of stuff. But I would definitely say like to make yourself presentable because it, you don't think about how dangerous it is to be invisible. No one can see you. So cars, uh, people running into you, like, I mean, there's a lot of things that could just, like, people just talking with a knife, like, or cutting, and they just like, what? Yeah. And then you've just been stabbed. And you're naked. Because <laughs> they don't know you're there. I would definitely, uh, well thought out, when you are invisible, to plan, like, almost every move that you make, and then have your essentials to be seen when you need to be seen. Yeah, because I think if you were actually making an honest attempt to be somewhat functional in society, yeah, you would have to move somewhere cold, very cold, so you could stay. You're always clothed. bundled in. It doesn't look as weird. Up. I think yeah. they did that in memoirs too. He was like skiing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. At the end. At the end, yeah. Yeah, you definitely have to do that. Next question. Hey, Stephen Park has commented, 2016 certainly has been a prick of a year thus far. It has. It really has. It's been rough. Yes. <coughs> um, then Kenneth Tabor, what is it about the universal films that hold up? I still watch and enjoy today. I think a lot of it is the acting. Like, the actors are, even though it's dated, um, and we're used to watching period pieces, so we're used to, like, seeing dated film. But I think the actors are so strong and the storytelling is so short uh, because none of these movies are really terribly long that it still feels like you're still getting the 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 idea across. They're just smartly put together um, where you can watch a lot of other um, movies made at the same time. And because they're not as gimmicky, uh, they could feel long just because you're not you can't seem to relate to those characters. But everything that they're talking about is fantastical, and the acting is so strong, it's easier to like kind of step into that world uh, versus trying to relate to somebody in the Depression, which is a lot different, uh, especially when the films were told in that time. Um, really comforting about the transatlantic um, style of speech. Yeah. That, they, that, was, that was the golden era of it. Yeah. yeah. And it was almost like, well, everything was pretty much written as it would be uh, live theater, you know? Uh, I think I think that's just something in us that we just we want stories to be told to us more than we want to be shown, and I think that that's what we're actually just getting away from in a lot of uh, film. The other one, the the kind of the kind of uh, visualize what I'm talking about is uh, Alfred Hitchcock's first film, uh, The Lodger, 1926, is a silent film, but the acting is so strong. And the storytelling is so precise, it doesn't feel like a, you're watching a really, really dated film. Uh, I mean, it, it does, but you could still feel for the characters. We're obviously watching a Charlie Chaplin movie or other certain silent films that are more like Nosferatu. Like, you don't feel like Harker's a human. Like, he, he reads a book, thinks it's silly, stands up and throws it across the room and laughs about it. Obviously, this is such a big thing that no one really does but Jim Carrey. But with The Lodger, the acting is so downplayed and so put together that way that it isn't over the top. I think that's what kind of makes Hitchcock just this master filmmaker, that even in 1926, he was able to do something that I still think you can kind of grasp now. Next question. Next question. Stephen Haar also had said Missing in Action 2 is the Chuck Norris movie. Mm -hmm. And then we have Milos Bukaraka. <laughs> Hello, Milos. Yay, we haven't heard from him in a while. <laughs> Would you make a monster mashup movie using monsters that became classics in the last two decades? For example, Freddy, Jason, Michael Myers, Leatherface, Pinhead, etc. If they were public domain, I mean. Um. Well, of course. Uh, dealing with those, I, I mean, as of late, I've really been playing in other people's sandboxes. With Plan 9, Trancers, A House of Horrors. Um, uh, it's kind of been my my thing as of late. Um, but, uh, I mean, it would be fun, but I think they're, uh, doing house of horrors, the monsters are so, um, uh, dated and, and not used as much. And of course they've become so part of pop culture that people aren't going to be as judgmental on that film where doing something with nightmare and Elm street or Freddy Krueger or Jason or, Texas Chainsaw, they're going to be a lot more um, 
they're just going to judge the film a lot harsher because this is, you know, people went to the theater to see these movies that are alive now. Not too many people went to go see Invisible Man in the theater and will be seeing my film. I guess you already done. Talk amongst yourselves. Um, so I would say it would be awesome to do, but I would be terrified to do it. And I'd rather be doing House of Horrors than uh, like a New Line Cinema mashup. Uh, just because I think it will be judged so harshly that the the fun of the storytelling might become too overbearing uh, that you wouldn't be able to have as much fun. You Paddington Bear? Yeah, did you come back from the Bahamas? <coughs> what, what is this? I had a request. Oh. <laughs> what was the request? Was wear a hat? Yeah. Well, not a request, really. Kenneth Tabor said, Alyssa, there are some pretty sweet hats being worn. Why aren't you enjoying the lovely head? Oh, so now okay, I yeah. Enjoy the club. There we go. <laughs> uh, next question. Okay, next question is Stephen Haar. In this day and age, it, if there is such a thing as an invisible man, can he defeat such a thing courtesy of artificial skin? Oh. Uh, well, it depends. Because if it works like food, where like he eats it and it becomes part of his system, his cells mix with it enough, it becomes invisible. Uh, I would imagine that if they took a, like a skin graft and then put it onto your face, the skin would stay visible. But if it integrated into your system enough, it actually would probably become invisible as well. If you're going by the theory of how food works with the Invisible Man, so it would, I would it would have to uh, because if for because once that skin becomes on a cellular level to even begin to heal itself, if it's ever cut. Right. Then it has to be officially a part of. So the I would think that it would turn invisible. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Next question. Um, yes. It is Kenneth Tabor. Why haven't you gotten into the merchandise game? I mean, I would love to have a Nilbog t shirt, House of Horrors figure set, etc. Uh, well, we, I think eventually we will. Um, uh, the big focus has been on the three flagships, which is Plan 9. Uh, house, oh, not, not House Horrors, Plan 9, Seventh Guest, and Trancers Paradox. <coughs> Once we have those three films out to where they, where, where, where they need to be, then I can actually start to focus. But we did start stuff with Plan 9. Uh, there's a couple things. One, there are two novels that are available right now on the website. There is going to be a feature-length documentary, and I want to say there's something else. Um, uh I can't remember what it is, but uh, but eventually uh, there'll be some more stuff that are that'll kind of be done. And actually, I think we're going to be doing more books. Um, I think that we're going to start coming out with the movies more, um, just because we kind of got we figured out how to do it. And uh, and I always like the novels that are kind of based on the books and sequels and prequels novelizations. Um, and I'm also thinking about doing a radio drama uh, for Audible. Um, uh, like a Wolfman story, something to that effect. Uh, but there, uh, every once in a while, we'll do a little spurt of like Fear Fighter t-shirts or Plan 9 t-shirts. Uh, the hard part is it just costs so much money to keep it going. So like you can do it all at once for like a little limited time, but to always have t-shirts ready to go, you have to spend so much to have them just in like a warehouse. Um, so... It's definitely something that we're thinking of, and um, and Nilbog uh, stuff will definitely become probably the lead selling thing, just because it does transition a bunch of movies. Uh, but yeah, but if you want to get the novelizations of Plan Nine, they're both available now. One novel based on the original film we had written, and then one novel based on my film. Uh, and then the feature link documentary on Plan Nine will be coming out in the next couple of weeks. Okay, These we, things really do give you gas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> um, we already have our first order. Stephen Haar would like a Royce Hobson action figure. It would just be... Uh, well, well, I could make you a Cobra Kai. I don't think anyone's <gasps> seen those yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <But> a, <laughs> Cobra, we can make an evil figure. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think Cobra Kai would be more, because he's more action. Well, that's Yeah, that's more... Reproducible. Um, Kevin yeah. Tabor suggested it should have a pull string voice. Oh, oh yeah, those would be fun. I definitely do one. I actually did one something similar for you on your Christmas tree. We have 
Oh, yeah, yeah. And then for your birthday, we made you a Cobra Kai mm -hmm. action figure. That's right. I still got it. Uh, never get rid of that. But uh, remind me, I'll send pics. You just send a request. I will yeah, show you the only... Contact him. We For his birthday, we actually made an action figure of his character from Skeleton Key 4, or known as 3 Part 2. Um, and we gave it to him for his birthday. So, yeah. That was Stephen a, Har wants a, a Tickle Me Royce figure. Oh, oh, that's just him. <laughs> hey, just come to a convention and tickle him. Hey, you know, uh, do you know anybody with a 3D printer? Uh, just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we can make this happen. I'm yeah. Bullshit. <laughs> I'll record anything you want. <laughs> Next question. Um, Kenneth Tabor. Hell yeah. I have seen the Cobra Kai. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. We had a screening at uh, Mysticon last year. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's this weekend, right? Yeah, Mariah, I think, is going, and Jared is going, but we will not be attending. We will be staying at home watching movies. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Aww. I know Kenna said he was going. I don't know. We, we would love to take you to Chuck E. Cheese. That's a different, that's a different Kenny. I know. But that, oh. Oh, we got, I thought we got both Kenna Kenny's Tabor. on here. No, no, no. Which one are you thinking? The Kenny's Tabor. Tabor. Well, I know, oh. I know, I know. Tabor, I know who you are. I just thought I was under the assumption that we they, had both Kenny's. Different, different Kenny. One. Kenny's on here. Well, shit. <laughs> He, it's hard for him to keep up with people outside of his of his hat. What 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 what? That's all we got. Are we done? I think so. Well, we had a good. We've been on an hour. Uh, it's been one of our longer shows. So uh, check out the Dark Zone page. I'll post what we do the last uh, of the the ten movie shows, and then we'll start the additional studies, which will take a little longer. Um, but yeah, guys, thanks so much for, for watching this stuff. Have fun at Mysticon if you're going. And uh, we will bark at you later. Da, 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 da.